Hey, it's Pretzel Lovers. Mark here from Whole Latte Love. We got Brian with me. How's Brian, what do you do here? What do I do here? I'm the tech manager. Tech Anything man. machines. Anything machines. So you might, you might have talked to Brian if you need a little help with your machine, or you might have had a, tell us about CoffeeCast. I know you do a lot of those. Oh, yeah, CoffeeCast. I love doing the uh, technical support on CoffeeCast. Get to see what's going on with people's machines, help them get up and running. And that's a free deal where you get a one-on-one -on -one video, like a Zoom session, yep. uh, with an espresso machine expert like Brian. And you could take a look at any machines we have, or if you need some help with them, or whatever, you want a product demo, we can do that. You can schedule that at our website. But today, we are going to take a brand new Pro 600 out of the box, get it set up. We, we're going to cheat a little bit. We got one already heated here, because we want to pull some shots, steam some milk, show you the operational stuff, that kind of thing. Sounds good um, to me. And you're going to take that out all by yourself now, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do want to, I got to give a shout out, right, to John Tompkins. John, I know you are watching us about an hour ago and you're back with us. I'm told by uh, Brian, we have Ellie back there as well, who will shoot us your questions. So if you have questions, bring them on in in the chat right now. And also Mr. Ranger, who I had a little message with this morning. Mr. Ranger, I know you ordered a 600 and you were hoping that we were going to do this when you were watching our Synchronica live stream yesterday. So here you go. Um, so let's get this guy open, right? You're you're on your own. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, I oh, prepped, he's, he's I prepped going these ham. things for years. I know how to do this. <laughs> okay, I'll do this part. All the heavy lifting for Mark here. <laughs> um, oh, I didn't do it quite right though, did I? <laughs> All right, Mark, come on. <laughs> okay. There we go. There we go. Oh, one more. Okay. There we go. All there right. Go. So a little accessory box in there. What do we got? Yep, accessory box right up on top. We'll throw that Little up handles, there, I guess. pull it up, Fry. And, oh, should we get it out first? Okay, now we'll yeah. take a look at the accessories. Uh, foam? Yeah, foam. Okay. Oh, I'm getting the heavy end here, it looks like. I don't know. All right. You get. This is definitely easier with two people, as long as you're working together, right? Yep, oh, more foam. More foam. That's how you know you got it there safe. Sit down for a second. There you go. Push. <laughs> Boom. Okay. There we go. Like the little cover here. Yeah, let's not trip over that. There you go. So this brand new out of the box. Brand new. Hold on one second. There you got. Oh, they like to okay. do this to us. You get the uh, rip cord from the bag wrapped around the cord there just to keep it from flying around. Oh, so yeah. make sure you get that unwound first. I mean, these are traveling across the ocean, right? It's true. All over the world just to get mm -hmm. to you. All right. There we go. Brand new. So we will, you know, take you through totally star. Uh, okay. Oh, I just, <laughs> like, what's going on? We lost, Our monitor went into power save over here. <laughs> so in the box, let's take a look at what we got. Uh, oh, the twist and change now handles. Um, so you can do the custom wood components and stuff, awesome. uh, which are available to really customize your s machine. Of course, you have your user manual. We're going to take you through that, but you know you can read that. Cool. Um, comes with a you know nice tamper there, and we've got the dual spout. I'm just going to with a double shot. Give them to me. Um, I'm just gonna do, uh, single spout. Single spout. They don't both go on at once though. Back flush disc. Tell you what that's all about if you don't know. I think most of you do. We'll put that um, in the hiding spot right up front there. And of course, a drip tray here. And Brian, you're telling me sometimes these come with some laser film on them. Yep, part of the manufacturing process. It not, doesn't mean anything if it's not on there. Sometimes they have it on, sometimes they don't. But this if you got a bunch of white stuff on your drip tray, yeah, you can take that off. Yep. And a little uh, group brush, and they're, that's special, right? Uh, yeah, from what I've been told, they are now vegan. So they must have been go. using animal hair before or something? Uh, I don't know. Probably something in the glue, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's get this started up. I'm gonna take off this, we'll get some, uh, what's our first step, really? All right, first step is gonna be to take the top off. With that, uh, get some water in the reservoir. One thing that's always worth checking is the float that's inside here. Uh, there's a little cap that's, whoop, 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 angle, there, there we is. go. So you see it right down the uh, corner there, there's a little cap, there's a little float inside. Uh, when the water goes up, raises the float, and that's what senses that there's water in there. So if you plug the machine in and it doesn't power up right away, you got no lights on your PID, but you got a green light on, just check to make sure that floats in there. 
<laughs> oh, well, let's ta talk real quick about water quality, because very important in a machine like this, especially from your perspective, because Absolutely. you see it when we're not taking care of that, Yeah, right? take care of it. <laughs> um, so we have some options for water treatment. We'll, we'll show you a couple here. We like the BWT option. So we have uh, the best cup in reservoir filter. Good so solution. it's going to look like, if I get it out of the box, it's Friday, we're getting a little crazy. <laughs> oh, and if you're watching live, get the questions in if I didn't mention that. So uh, that's the filter itself. This does a calcium to magnesium ion exchange. So this is going to sit on this as so you can get this as a package. And then in the reservoir, so you pop that in there, and then you attach that to the little nipple at the bottom of the reservoir, right? Yep. Goes right on the, uh, oh, I'm angle here. Uh, there so it everything's is. Everything's huh? backwards. Is this in there somewhere? Where am I? Oh, there yeah. you go. Oh, 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 right there. Oh. <laughs> ah, there right in the little go. silver part there, this, this tube will go right over that. And that, that filters water pretty much on demand. Yep. So that's one option. Another option is we have the BWT Best Safe Pad Filters. uses the same technology. Mm -hmm. uh, calcium to magnesium ion exchange. Also does the carbon filtration to so get rid of the chlorine. Uh, but that leaves you, both of those options are going to leave you with water that will not cause scale in your machine if you use them properly. Right. Now something a little different with this is this takes resident time in the reservoir, 8 to 12 hours I believe it is. Yep. So if you're going through more than a reservoir a day, you probably don't want to go here. Yeah. Um, yeah. These, these are a really good solution for if you're having like your, you know, one or two drinks first thing in the morning. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you're... Uh, someone like me that drinks way too much all throughout the day, then uh, you may want to go with a different, uh, something more like the, in the cup system. I was going to go with, I just have a lot of friends, so that's why we uh, go. Well, no. okay. Show off, he has friends. <laughs> I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other option we have over here are the, uh, the, this is the newest pitcher, the BWT Aqualizer, which you'll see on the site pretty uh, soon. Um, before that, it was a BWT Penguin. They both take this very, the same filter, type, you just can't see it as well in this one, and that also uses the calcium uh, to magnesium ion exchange. So, and again, that's going to leave you with water that's got the right amount of minerals for good flavor and machine production because a lot of people I see in the comments, they want to put RO water, pure, no, no mineral water into their machines, and you shouldn't do that because they can cause corrosion of metals. Yep. And it's also going to make uh, coffee that doesn't taste all that great because those minerals are almost like putting salt on a piece of corn or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it gives it that little something extra. Uh, but th this will work. So let, uh, we want to get some water in, right? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So I'll start pouring. You start plugging. All righty. Um, you know, I would recommend if, you know, in a brand new machine, probably taking this reservoir out of here and rinsing it. Um, and then we're going to show you, like, the whole fill procedure on the machine, because these machines will make sure that you fill them before they will operate, right? Exactly. Say uh, safety this installed in the machine to make sure that you actually fill the coffee boiler. This is going to be on any of the machines that have a uh, boiler that doesn't require a liquid level system. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just to ensure that the element doesn't get damaged by the boiler heating without water in it. And I'm going to need some more water, so while you uh, do your thing, I think, uh, yeah. yeah, right? Okay, I, I, I'll, I'll pour, pour that. Here. Okay. Got that? All right. Yeah, you do the you turn on. I'm just doing the boring stuff, putting water in All right, here. sounds good. All right, so. I'm going to turn the machine on. First thing we'll see is the green light come on. We get our firmware version from the PID, and you can hear it. It's starting to fill your steam boiler. All right. So what I like to do is wait until the steam boiler is full, and then proceed to filling the coffee boiler. Uh, it's way you can make sure that you got enough water in there and everything. Uh, also, it's quicker because the pump's running in two different directions. It's going right. to kind of go slower but shouldn't take too long. Now this is, a, you know, if you didn't already know, it's a dual boiler machine, so you can brew and steam at the same time. It uses a vibration pump, and I do, if we need more water at some point, I do have another set of water over there. Go away. I think I just got a little air in there. Okay. It's not uncommon with a any vibratory machine, vibratory pump machine. Uh, during shipping, uh, if you've just drained it or something like that, you can get a little bit of air bubble inside the pump. So if you start filling the machine and you're noticing the water level on the uh, in the reservoir isn't going down, you can do what I just did, and you just lift it up a little bit, and you'll hear the 
tone of the pump kind of change a little. And what you're doing is you're kind of forcing that air to get the uh, get a burp and air bubble out of it, basically, and just kind of pushes the water through. And that's, uh, you hear it commonly as force priming. Mm -hmm. And the reason I just power cycled is because there is a timeout on the uh, pump. Oh, okay. perfect. So oh, we just made it. If, okay. you if you run the pump for, I believe it's over a minute straight, it'll time it out. So you'll have to do a reset on the machine anyways. But I mean, something like that doesn't happen very often, but I'm kind of glad no. it did. So you can see exactly. what you do and then you don't have to call Brian. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's funny because we were just talking about what happens if during the live stream something happens. Yeah. Hey, you got me here, right? There That's right. But that, as you can see, that's something very, very simple. It's lifting up and pushing down on the uh, reservoir a little bit, and it gets you up and running. All right. All right. And then so now, now that fill part, right? Yep, we still got the fill mode on here. Mm -hmm. uh, so like I said, this is just calling for you to fill the coffee boiler. And the way that we do that is by lifting the brew lever. Now, when you do this, you got to let it run for 30 plus seconds. I always like to say the plus part because mm -hmm see it a lot that people get very ambitious to start playing with the machine and you wind up shutting it off course. right yeah <laughs> i get it i trust me i get it uh <laughs> you hit that 29 second point you drop the lever that's not going to actually run it all the way it'll make you rerun that so make sure when you're doing it that you're letting it run for at least 30 seconds i got like 31 32. water in there before yeah, well, it shuts okay. off And we went we actually a little bit longer there. And I mean, you should probably, even if you get that 30 right, you probably want to run it until you get some water coming out of the group. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, if you okay. don't, yeah, if, if for some reason you don't have water coming out yet after 30 seconds, and this is a really big one to point out for the flow control device. If you're running this with a flow control device on the machine, make sure that device is actually open and not shut, because otherwise you won't have any water coming out at all. And you'll know what's going on. Yeah, and we do have, we do have a flow control over on this one, so we'll talk more about that now let's talk about you know what you should expect when the machine is is heating up right because you might hear some sounds see yep. a little moisture in places uh what's going on so you're gonna hear a little bit of like a rushing sound think of like when you're boiling water for pasta or something you hear that sound coming from the pot uh it's not uncommon to hear that sound from both of your boilers as they're heating up mm -hmm. um once in a while uh you'll hear almost like a little like a tink sound a little knock sound uh, if you hear that a lot, uh, it might mean that you just still have a little bit of air left inside the coffee boiler. So run water out of the group for a second, that sound usually goes away. Uh, once, when you're looking at the PID, once you see that the temperature is getting up close to 212 degrees on the uh, steam boiler, that's when you're gonna start having that steam and a little condensation that's coming out of your vacuum relief valve. Mm -hmm. uh, that little valve seals once it reaches a certain pressure. Uh, where that vents to is this little, we'll call it a little button there, this little drain spout that's right behind the group head. So you're going to see a little bit of steam and a little bit of like, uh, kind of like a sound. Yeah, you'll hear, yeah. And you'll hear like a And then it just stops. And that stops, yep. Yeah. So that's completely normal. You expect to see that with uh, a lot of the machines have. You see that little button on the front there that's coming from that boiler. Okay, now... Uh, we also, so the PID uh, controller over here, where you're going to set temperatures, should we just maybe take a look and go through that? Yeah, and sure thing. See, because sometimes, you know, you may have, you may get a machine that's in Fahrenheit, you want it in Celsius or Celsius in Fahrenheit, or you want to set your boiler temperatures, so. Yep. Kind so, of go through. this is the, uh, the quick entrance, you got a plus and a minus button there, if you just press those together, you got to have quick fingers, because it doesn't take long for that to switch to back, away. all right? Yeah. So, if you see me hopping back in, it's because it doesn't give me enough time. All right, we got T1. All right, right there. And we're in Celsius. We're I in Celsius already. right now, yep. So that's going to be temperature there. It's the steam, sorry. T1, 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 <laughs> T1 is going to be your uh, brew boiler. T2 is your uh, steam boiler. Mm -hmm. O2. This is a, a fun one. You can shut off or on your steam boiler. Mm -hmm. So if you're right just now doing espresso, oh, and yep, don't you want to do, exactly. Yeah. Save a little power. Absolutely, you can turn it on and off. I think I just shut it off though. So let's turn that back on. All right, so it's on. 
You don't have to press anything else. That whatever you leave it on for the selection is what it's going to stay on. Okay. All right. But I want in. Fahrenheit because, you know, we're in the U.S. Yeah, well, I'll, 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 get, I'll get over there for you. More, just in case we're watching in Europe. Don't yell at me. So you got that little O shape there. Mm -hmm. That's your little degree sign. You go into there and you can cycle through Celsius and Fahrenheit. You saw that. So Fahrenheit, Celsius. Leave it on Fahrenheit. Okay. Okay. So that sequence is press both buttons, then use the minus to cycle through the different settings. Exactly. And yep. to change the settings, start with the plus button. Exactly. Yeah. And it, that becomes very second nature after a while. Um, I, I think some people get a little nervous when stuff just goes away. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it goes away really quickly, so yeah. you may fumble around with it a little bit, but just, you know, hit it again, you're right back in there. Um, so I'll point out, we got the clean cycle, that's where you can set how many uh, brew cycles you have before you need to uh, do a back flushing on the machine. Uh, we like to recommend around 100 shots for you. Yeah, at least to probably 100, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for back, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. We've got the stuff to help you with that back here. Um, and then, so you see, like, uh, also, what's going on with a little flashing dot there? So the little flashing dot, that's indicating which of your two boilers is heating. So you got one that's towards the left and one that's towards the right there. Mm -hmm. So the, they're, they're kind of uh, in sync with where the boilers are. So your brew boilers here, your steam boilers there. So your dot, when it's not over on the right-hand side, is for your steam boiler. When it's on the left, is for your brew boiler. So when the machine is operating normally, it's, it's normal to see that kind of dot flash, because that's actual yep. pulses of electricity going to the boiler. Yep, yeah, if you were to indication. look at uh, the static relays that are inside <coughs> the machine, the relays have little uh, red LEDs on them, mm -hmm. uh, and those actually sync in time with them. So if uh, once the machine's done fully heating, instead of flashing, it's going to be a solid tone. Or, yep. Yeah, so indicating that it's uh, what cycle it's on. Okay. Um, and of course, you got a shot timer. Um, so when, you, when you're pulling a shot, you know, you'll get a, you'll get a timing for your shot. Really handy yep. in most cases. Now we have our, uh, let's talk about the gauges here. So we got the steam boiler gauge yep. and the brew pressure gauge. Um, now we're not going to see any pressure on the, in the steam boiler until it gets to at least boiling point, right? Right. Yep. Once it gets over 112 degrees, so I guess depending also on or how uh, yeah. how high up. You, that's yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. <laughs> it's Friday. You get it's Friday. Yep. Uh, you have elevation, blah blah blah. Oh, okay. So you know yeah, that yeah. can play into it. Maybe yep. a little bit lower if you're way up on a mountain, but yeah. You know, right. Right. In yeah. general, around 212 degrees when uh, you'll start seeing that going up. And it's not, it's not abnormal to see a little pressure here at times, yep. even lots more than what we're seeing right now. I mean, definitely when you're actually pulling a shot. Yeah, yeah. Um, After pulling a shot, because you still have the resistance of the puck in there, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't get a chance to vent out all of the excess pressure at the end there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why you're going to see a little bit of pressure on there. What you'll notice if you take the portafilter off, lift the lever and drop it again, you'll see that pressure drop back down. That'll, that'll go away. Yep. Um, Okay, uh, so we talked about, oh, let's show where the OPV is on this one, right? So we can yeah. control the brew pressure. And actually on the machine, we've done a little bit of that next door here on this machine, which we'll talk about. So you got access to it yep. right here. OPV is right here. All you need is a flathead screwdriver to adjust that. Uh, pretty easy to do. All you do is take your back flush disc and put it in your portafilter, lock that into place, lift the lever and start, let it start running, uh, and just turn the screw and you'll see it kind of same idea as how you're turning it. You turn it clockwise, you're going to increase the pressure. Your counterclockwise is going to go down. Mm -hmm. It's just like that. Pretty quick and easy. Now, we talk about this in a lot of in our other videos, but um, when you're setting that pressure, if you actually want nine bar on your coffee, which is kind of you know, like the standard that was developed years and years ago that everybody like, gets really uptight about, um, you actually want to have, see something a little different maybe on this gauge, right? When you're setting that. Did we talk so, did, on the vibration pump machines, right? Do we usually go to like 10 on those to get nine in the group? Yeah, yeah. On the vibration pumps, yeah. Though, the, when you look at it, the maximum pressure is going to be what you set it to there. So if right. you're putting something like coffee in there, you're going to want to let allow to uh, expand a little bit further. So I, I like setting it to 10 to get that nine at the actual uh, group head. All right, all right. Um, so in this one, we have the quick steam valves on. There is also a knob version of this machine. Yep. Um, the quick steams here are, are newer. 
Um, and just, you know, some general stuff. This is customizable on the side. I don't know if you can see some of the sides. It's got the, the, the black panels in here, but you can do custom woods in there. And again, you can dress up because we have the uh, twist off handle port filters. You can dress those up. You can dress up these knobs as well here with different species of wood that we have available on the website. Since we have no pressure. Oh yeah. If you want oh, to yeah, take them off, to, yeah, yeah. Lock it down and then just yeah. turn, and it'll come right off. I'm gonna put a nice piece of custom wood on there if you'd like. Yep. And lock it back up. All right. Well, I, I think maybe we're ready to pull a shot. And I said I would pull the first shot, and then you're gonna steam some milk, right? I'm gonna do it. All right. So let's go over to our machine that's all heated up and and ready to go. Um, next door here, I do have a Chiato E37S grinder. Love this grinder. It's quick. It's 83 millimeters. It's we call it our reference grinder here. I it's call it what I use at home, so. Yeah, <laughs> but an absolutely beautiful grinder. You know, you don't have to go this far, but if you just want the best, but it, there it is. Yeah. Um, so, and we're, use, we're gonna use, uh, I'm gonna pull a one to two brew ratio shot. If you don't know what that means, that means we're gonna put, uh, I'm gonna use uh, somewhere around 16 and a half, 17 grams of coffee in my portafilter. And uh, we're gonna try and get uh, about 30, two to 34 grams out. So we're gonna weigh our, weigh our, both our coffee and our espresso. Absolutely. Right? Okay. Um, I do like a, a clean, dry portafilter when I go. We'll clean that out. And notice, you know, the one thing you wanna do is keep this in, you want, this is nice and hot, because it's been heating up. Uh, you do want your portafilter preheated. So you wanna leave it in the group. And I say, you don't have to crank it in there, um, but just, you know, leave it in there. Um, oh, and also let's talk about clocking in, right? Because everybody's like gets really uptight if it doesn't stick out right at six o'clock. Yeah, and that's on a new so machine, it might not always. Yeah, do that. Yeah, that's uh, if where this one goes. Yep. So this yeah, one, you can sell. It's it's close to six, and if you crank it, it's going to be at six. But just snug. It's a little off of six o'clock. That's yeah. completely normal. That's the group gasket. There that's the it group is. gasket inside the group head uh, breaking in. So it's going to take a little bit of use before it actually clocks over otherwise you'd have it swinging too far over once it's broken in so okay so I'm gonna load this up and weigh it and uh, tell us a little bit about the flow control maybe while I'm doing that yeah so uh, good rule of thumb when you're first getting used to using the machine uh, right now I have it shut all the oh, way no. closed uh, I like to set it to what we call the stock flow rate uh, and what that is is going to be what basically what you'd be getting out of the group head if you didn't have a flow control device installed so the way that you set that is close it all the way and then you open it one and a quarter rotations. Uh, and that's just a good point of reference for every time you start to dial in. Start there, you know exactly where you are, you know roughly what you should be getting as far as your flow rate, which Mark did a lot of studies on yeah. a while back. You're at what is it? Uh, about nine grams per second at the stock. We're about rate. yeah, we're between seven and eight grams per second on a vibration. Uh, vibration, pump. yeah. I'm thinking so if you really want to weigh this, you know, you can run it for you know different valve positions if you really want to figure out your flow rates. Uh, but stock rate is yeah, seven between seven and eight, and so that's where we're set now. So if you don't want to use a flow control, you just open it like that, right? Exactly. Um, okay, I was shooting for seventeen grams. That's I got sixteen point nine out of this. That's another reason I love this grinder. Very consistent once you're dialed in. Absolutely. And I'm just going to tamp that. And then move my scale over and try and remember to tear it because I often forget. And I'll use a little shot pitcher here. Let's get that in there first. And see how we did. I did dial this coffee in earlier, and I think that, you know, dialing in is one of those really misunderstood things for people who are newer to espresso. That those tiny little grind changes can make a big difference. But I'll kind of call out the weight as we go here. If I position my shot glass, I often don't get my shot glass <laughs> position very well. Uh, but that's looking pretty decent. Oh, you're going to help me out. Thanks, buddy. So we're at <laughs> 17 grams, about halfway there. And I'm going to stop because I want about 33 in here. So I'll stop right there at about 32. And I'm, hey, not too bad. I'm not too bad. Tenth of a gram or something off there in 24 seconds. So that's, that's what you're kind of looking for for a basic basic dial in a basic shot of course you can change the ratios ratios however you want yeah and go, to, go to taste you know don't uh, don't be afraid to uh, break all the rules whatever tastes yeah. good to you is where you want to go I, yeah I think things have gotten a lot looser with that because I often see you know if you're using flow control you might be going 40 seconds you might be doing a very low flow to start with a really fresh coffee or something mm -hmm. um, so your total sh total time from pump on could be 
you know, 40 seconds. I mean, if you're not seeing first drip of coffee out of here, in, you know, until 15 seconds in with a really low flow rate, you certainly aren't going to finish the rest of your extraction in 10 or 15 seconds. I pulled one yesterday yeah. at about 45 seconds that I thought was going to be horrible, and it was absolutely fantastic. So you never know what you're going to get. Okay, that's, that's exactly what I expect out of this coffee. It's got a little sweet hint underneath. Uh, it's a nice nutty almond kind of thing going on. You uh, got the crema th wave there. You got the, the crema wave. Um, so let me load up another one. I'm going to throw you the milk and put you on the spot. Awesome. And maybe while, once I get the shot going, because it is a dual boiler, so you can brew and steam at the same time, I'll get the shot going and you just start steaming and kind of demo that, right? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, oh, I'm going to have to reach by here for my knockback. Anyone Thanks, that watched us on the Synchronica yesterday already knows that uh, I am not a professional when it comes to steaming milk, but I will do my best for you folks. And I'm got gonna, the uh, basics down. You got time for a question, Rachel? Yeah, shoot. Yeah, um, Colby asks, are those... Oh, sorry, I started crying. <laughs> We're going to have to hear that one again. Colby wants to know, are those no burn steam wands and a oh, water spigot? Shall I give it a go? Do it. <laughs> yeah, I knew you would. <laughs> so yes, there, yeah, no there's burn. Bo both of these are. The, the valve itself is hot. Yeah. The group itself is hot. The wands are okay to touch. Yeah. The higher up you get, it's warm up here, down here, it's not going to be so hot. Uh, the actual tip itself will get pretty warm. So as long as you're sticking within this range right here, you're definitely safe. All right, and we were, bre we were brewing around, what, 200? I didn't even see. Yep, yeah. 200. Okay. Um, so, I, you know what, I'm not going to bother weighing this one. I'm pretty happy it's going to be in. Um, so, you, are you ready? I think I'm ready. Okay, I'm going to let this shop go. All righty. You're going to steam away. Okay. And I did leave you a rag over there, right? Okay. Yep. I'm going to keep an eye on my Oh, that's, that's bubbly. This is going to be great. <laughs> you got a camera on this? Nope, nope, you're hidden. So oh, good, good, you good. You out there, okay. My you don't want to see this. I usually, if I do steam, I try to keep uh, my pressure down a little bit lower just because lower pressure is a little bit more control when you're steaming and uh we have it jacked up pretty high there so yeah i turned it up <laughs> to max just for proxy <laughs> but just you, because he wanted that, I mean, to see what would great, happen to me right that's a great thing about a dual boiler is you can turn that down and give yourself a little more time to work with it that's not too bad okay work yeah. it out all yeah. right yeah i don't know all right all right where are we going can i see can we yeah, see there you go all right Someone out there that actually knows what they're doing is looking at this going, why is he holding it like that? I think this is better than what I did I mean, yesterday, a, right? I see like a um, bunny rabbit. Yeah. Or with really long floppy it's, ears. Or yeah. I don't know. It, it's, be, it's better than the alien from yesterday. <laughs> so, I mean, I'll, I'll take it as a win. And as I always say, art or not, still going to taste great, yeah. right? And it's but, abstract, but does it taste good? Uh, let's see. That tastes delicious. Thank you. And I, I made it with it. love. Oh, now it's like a parrot or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's a whale. Look. A whale. Oh, yeah, yeah okay. spouting yeah. whale. Yeah. Spouting whale. Um, <laughs> so let's see. So, oh, uh, I don't know. You know, with flow control, I think one thing that people should know is, um, you know, if you close this all the way and you're still getting a flow out of here, something's up. Something's up, right. yep. You got to make maybe adjust this up a little bit. We have a great video on showing you how to do yeah. that. I won't do that whole thing right now. Uh, but again, it's that one and a quarter turns open basically, so long as you're seeing that when it's closed, um, to get this stock flow rate. Yeah. Um, and do check out the videos. We've got a lot of, lot of information on how to use flow control um, right, on, right on the support page, which is linked down in the description for this, on how to use this and, and you know, really craft your coffee, if you will. Uh, let's make another check for any other questions. Yeah, we've got one more question. Sure. Um, Mass Hart would like to know, um, since the 600 is not plumbable, how do you achieve low pressure pre-infusion on this? Low control. Low control. Yep. That, that's, that's how you get there, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just kind of give you a little demo. So I'm just going to close this all the way. 
and we'll just open it up a little bit. I mean, you do with the flow control, you also get the gauge here, but you can see, I mean, that's, it's basically just dripping there. I think, it, yeah, it's great on too, right? Yeah. It's dripping, and then, you know, if you want a little more, and then, you know, you can close it off, so if you want to do that, you know, wet the coffee and stop, you can yep. stop it. pre-wetting action. You know, that's the thing that's been, people been doing that, those really super long blooms of coffee. Yeah. Uh, more and more with that. Um, and then you can take it up and you can kind of follow on your pressure gauge if you wanted to do pressure profiling. I mean, the two are sort of related, but not quite the same. Yeah. Um, you could watch your pressure here and you can let, bring it up to like four bar or something and then bring it back down or bring it back up hard. Oh, and I, I, I did mention, I think we can see it right here, so I'm just going to close the flow if you look at our gauge, because we did turn down the OPV on this machine. My friend Brian back there, who's running the show, um, he liked, there was a certain coffee that he liked at 8 bar, so he just brought this, he brought the OPV down to uh, 8 bar nice. and could use that. And you can see, with flow control installed, you don't have to put the back flush disc in to manipulate that. Right. That makes it kind of easy. I'm just going to let that out. And then we're back to, so there's a more normal flow rate. And you can see on the pressure gauge now, since there's no coffee resistance, you're not going to get near the reading on here that you would, you would when you're right. pulling a shot. Um, so good. Anything else you think we should know about this guy? Um, as far as like initial startup uh, pointers, one thing that I do see a lot of questions about is the gauge on the flow control. Mm -hmm. uh, not specific just to the... Pro 600, but any machine with it installed. Uh, people will, if you, if you look at it, and you lift the lever, you'll see that you'll see the pump gauge is moving a little bit, mm -hmm. but the group gauge isn't doing anything. Um, that's completely normal because this gauge is based off of how much resistance is in the group head. So yeah. if you're worried about, uh, I don't, I think maybe that there's an issue with my gauge. Uh, it might just be that your coffee needs to be ground a little bit finer. Uh, the best way to prove this to yourself is if you push your back flush disc in and put it on, lift it up, you should see that gauge go right up. Uh, and that's a great reference for just knowing that you need to fine up your grinds a little bit. Oh yeah, let's, yeah, let's show that. While you're grabbing that, I just want to show you, you know, there are tons of accessories. You know, a lot of people want to pull the, the triples or a bottomless shot. Um, so here I do have a bottomless, uh, Proftec bottomless. Uh, I happen to put a 22 gram uh, Barista Pro basket in that one. Nice. Um, so you can do those triple shots if you want to. I did have that question earlier, I think. For, it came from our Synchronica video yesterday. Mm. Or, or no, it was on, on a Prof. It, no, it wasn't with you. It was with Missy. We were looking at the uh, Prof. We look so much go. alike, you know? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but so there's accessories like that. And uh, yeah, but let's take a look at the uh, back flush disc and how that all works out. Show you my pro tip real quick. Oh, yeah, pro tip. Uh, getting the basket off here. Use your back flush disc and just put it under the edge of the basket that's in your portafilter and just pop up. Yeah. It's a quick and easy way to get your baskets out. Pop that in, lock it in place, and whoop. And now, now we'll get a reading over here, right? Yep. So it takes a minute for it to come Starts up. Starts building the pressure, then it gets there. And then you can see we're at eight, eight. In, eight in both places. Now, yep. if you were releasing a little water through there, you definitely wouldn't have eight there, right? Right. Um, oh, and so real quick, grab the confusion. and let's just do a little quick back flush demo, right? Yeah, because you didn't do a rinse after you pulled that shot. Yeah, because I'm terrible. I'm I notice these things. <laughs> it's my job to notice these things, Mark. So you're using a little scoops brush, which we like a lot. It helps you measure out the confusa. And the confusa here, this is what they use in all the cafes, right? Um, but uh, Most of them, at least. Yeah. Most of them a lot. <laughs> so, well, somebody, somebody out there is going to watch this, and, and they're, they're going to say, gonna say well, I don't use it. confusa. I th okay, it's probably the most popular. Probably. Unless yeah. I've been you. around for as long as I can remember. So um, so that, that's what it looks like in there. And you're just going to put put that on. And I'll let you do the honors. All right. I like to go by the 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 rules, as many 10s as you need to go. Uh, lift it up and let it run for 10 seconds. Uh, watch building the pressure. down here what happens, right? Yeah. Watch down below once. Uh, so I sit it there for a second. Yeah. Let it soak. Mm -hmm. Run it a little um, bit longer. Let it build up pressure, then drop it. And you see that little see. bit of foam coming out. Now, now you repeat this. 
Mark always takes really good care of the machines there that in one here. Was so this clean, one's right? yeah, yeah. This is probably not going to come out looking super mucky, but uh, it's a real good sign of maybe needing to new needing to do this a little bit more often if when you do that instead of coming out with a slight tint of brown to it if mm -hmm. it comes out looking like your latte uh, then you probably want to back flush a little bit more often uh, even if it's just with water only instead of a cleaner yeah because you don't you honestly don't want to overdo it with a cleaner right because right, you can yeah. actually uh, get rid of lubrication in inside the group and yep yeah these these cleaners are uh, basically descaler or uh, not a descaler. Uh, de de -gre oh, boy, degreasers I'm sorry yeah. Uh, so once you use them in the group head, it's going to start taking some of the oils and some of the uh, lubrication off of the levers and the cams. Uh, so it's not uncommon after doing a back flushing to have it be a little bit tough and squeaking sound, stuff like that. Typically speaking, if you pull a couple shots right afterwards, the oils from the it's coffee will re-lubricate everything and the sounds will go away and it'll go back to moving fine. If it doesn't, then it's just time to re-lubricate your valve. It's not a big deal. And now you can see, now we'd probably do, you'd probably do that a few more times, that cycle that you did. Yep. Um, and then you just, you know, kind of dump this out, right? Give it a little yep. rinse out. Dump, rinse. Again, I like going the, the 10 second rule, Gil, all and the then, as you can. And then repeat this again, right? Yep, exactly. Lift for 10, drop it. And, and from just, there, you're just more until just everything's kinda, clean coming out of here, right? Yeah, clean no coming more. out of there. And I, what I personally like to do as well is to run from here and be able to see the water that's coming into the blind disc and make sure that you're not seeing a little soapy bubbles in there anymore as well. Yeah. That way you know you're clean coming out of here so that's the lower end of your group head is nice and clean and nothing dirty is coming out of here you know the top end's clean. And you did you mentioned the you know just the plain water back flush so maybe you know once a week depending on your use or I you say you, you do I, it like I'm, daily. I'm neurotic because, I do it every time I use the machine. Um, so. And that's just doing that process of, uh, but without the cleaner. Yep. All right. All right. Well, one more check for any questions we might have. We're all good. All right. Um, well, look, guys, thanks for watching. Brian, thanks so much for lending us your expertise. And again, if you want to get a one-on-one -on -one demo or maybe a little help with your machine or any of the products that we offer, it's Coffee Cast, right? Yeah, absolutely. We love talking to you guys. All right. And then, you know, any of the things we've talked about will be linked down in the description, including a, a connection right to our support site for the 600, which has had tons of video. Again, those uh, flow control things and that kind of stuff. You can find all of that there if you're interested in that. Um, and Brian, thanks again. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, happy Friday, everyone. And if you have more questions, you can use the comments. We keep an eye on those even after the live stream and we'll answer those for you. Uh, but again, thanks for watching and we'll see you back here soon for more of the best in everything coffee. Brought to you by Whole Latte Love.